Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, defense expert. We've got another review video for you guys today. Jeremy's gone out into the YouTube interwebs and found a fencing-related video that he thinks that you guys would like to watch and that I would be able to positively critique and give some positive feedback on. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the title of the video is How to Measure and Lay Out Fence Post. It's a pretty common question, and you see guys do it a lot of different ways, so I'm kind of excited to see this way. We're ready for another great outdoor project, and I gotta say, we got the perfect day for it. Great fence building weather, right, Andy? Absolutely perfect fence building weather, Justin. Okay, so uh, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at an L-shaped fence. We're gonna go two panels in that direction, okay. and one panel in that direction. Okay, now this is just gonna be a little bit of a privacy fence, so let me get a sense of it. Here. Yeah, you see these videos a lot here in, in our region too, so we would call them a boundary corner fence. So it sounds like they're simply wanting to make it distinctive corner there. They want to make sure everyone understands exactly where the property lines are. Always a good idea. So we're coming 16 feet this way and eight feet this way. That's right, Justin, and we're starting the layout right at the corner. All right. So the first thing we'll do is drive a pin in the ground right at the corner. Okay. And then you'll take the pin and the hammer and the end of the string yep. down to the other end of the fence. So this is a pretty common common way of laying it out with a with a string line there. A lot of guys will do this differently. You know, so there's and there's actually specific tools out there for laying out a fence line. Um, now, you know, this is just gonna be three sections of fence. It's not gonna be an entire fence line. So string line can probably get you by, but if you're doing entire fences, you know, there's tools. Mr. Fence Tools has a has a tool specifically for laying out laying out a fence line. This is where the fence is actually going to sit. This is where the fence is actually going to sit. Now you want to come uphill just a little bit. That's about right. And I would put that pin right in between your feet there. So one difference here is it doesn't look like they've determined the boundary lines. So this fence might not actually be on the property corner. It looks like they've got more property on either side of it. Uh, so this might not be a boundary line fence. If it was, I'd really want to make sure that the property corners were surveyed and that we were laying this out based on the actual property lines. All right. With the 16 foot run laid out, it's time to square off the adjoining eight foot or L section of the fence. This is easy to do. So one difference too is they're putting that string line exactly where the fence is going to go, um, which could give them issues when they go to dig the holes. Typically what we would do is we would install a, a, the string line eight to 10 inches, maybe a foot off of that, off of the fence line. That way the string line can stay up the whole time. We can measure off of that string line for every hole uh, instead of just saying right here on, on the fence line. Using a Pythagorean triple, or what non-eggheads call a 3-4-5 triangle. For those who missed this day in math class, here's the gist. A triangle that has sides measuring three foot, four foot, and five foot creates a perfectly square 90 degree corner. For squaring up big areas like a fence layout, use a multiple of 3-4-5 so that's interesting, and it's it's a very practical way to figure out that 90-degree corner. So typically what we would do is we would have our two string lines for each one of these lines, and then we would simply take a, take a square corner, speed square, and then make sure the speed square, we'd move the line, our short line in this case, the 8-foot line, uh, we'd move that into where it aligned with that speed square. Um, make sure we had a 90 degree corner, but this is a really practical way, especially if you're in the middle of a yard, like these guys are, you're not worried with property corners. You can't square off of the property line. Um, yeah, three, four, five, good to know. Like six, eight, 10, here's how to do it. From the corner, measure out six feet on the long run of fence, then measure out eight feet to approximate the short run. Hold a tape from the six foot mark and measure out 10 feet. Adjust so the 10 foot and 8 foot points line up, automatically creating a perfectly square corner. Here's how it looked for us. Take this pin, okay. go down about 6 feet. Right there. And drive that in on the line at 6 feet. Alright. Okay, good. Hook your tape measure on there. And we want yours 
to measure 10 feet and mine to measure 8 feet. Talking about the tape measures, right? The tape right? measures, yes. And that will give us a square corner. You want to drive that in? I'll sure try. I got a secret for you, though. What's that? I'm not left-handed. Oh, man. The first two strings in the layout represent where the fence will actually sit. But when it comes time to dig, these strings will be in the way. So we install a second set of offset strings three feet outside. Okay, so they're using what they would call the offset string method. That's good Good to see. It makes sense. So using two sets of strings might be a little bit extra work. But uh, but for the DIY crowd, it actually gives you a really good visualization of exactly where the fence line is going to. By the layout. The offset strings stay up for the whole job, giving us a reference to measure from when needed. And before I just tie 40 knots in this thing, do we have any tricks here? Oh, sure. What you do is you loop it around, loop the string around the stake once, pull the long end taut, and then just wrap that around the shorter end. Oh, so there is no knot. No, no knot at all. So, so this knotless tying is probably one of the first lessons, and maybe the first lesson I remember my grandpa teaching me is uh, is how to. It, it, he wasn't using string lines, obviously, is a different scenario, but using the method of of affixing a string to a pole without tying knots. It's interesting to see them use that as well. Okay, what was that? Loop it around the stake, hold tension on the line, and wrap it over the shorter end. The last step in the layout is to mark the location of the post holes that will be set eight feet apart. Painting large X's beyond the size hole you're going to dig is a great way to target the locations because even as you dig and remove the center of the target, you'll still maintain a visual reference. So one thing to talk about is the color of the paint. And this, this obviously might vary you know, regionally or country to country, but one of the hot topics in our region right now is the color paint contractors use to denote where their holes are going. Um, so it looks like they're using either an orange or a red, depending on, you know, the monitor might not be truly truly uh, showing the colors correctly, but uh, orange is telecommunications. So uh, in our area, that'd be a Mediacom or an AT&T. Uh, if it's red, then that would denote power or electricity. So the correct color to spray with when you're denoting excavation or proposed excavation is white. Um, now, they're, they're spraying it right before they dig the holes. They, they know that these are marks for the holes. But, you know, when guys are doing layouts for large projects, it's always a good idea to use the correct color. In this case, uh, it would have been white. All right, we've got our post locations marked out. And next, it's the fun part, digging. Well, guys, that looks like the video. A uh, nice quick video explaining how layout to lay out fence lines. I think these guys did a good job. I really do. I think uh, the DIY crowd as well as the contractor crowd, I think we both agree that this is a good way of laying out a fence line. Uh, if you guys have a different way of laying out a fence line, leave it in the comments below. I'm always willing to learn and listen to new ideas and different ways of doing things. But guys, until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.